so glad he's back. <laughs> Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. The song that they sang a few moments ago said, Our God is an awesome God. I thought that no doubt many people from many different walks of life believe in an awesome God. But many times this God is angry or he's distant or he's undiscoverable. You might go to the place of worship and you leave just as doubtful as when you came. But what I see here tonight is a group of people who have met together to proclaim that Jesus isn't just a distant deity, but that He is an awesome God in love, in mercy, in forgiveness, in deliverance, in power to set you free from your bondages, from whatever it is that has its hand of control upon you. That this Jesus, tonight we are celebrating, He's real. He's real in our lives. He's our companion. He's our friend. He's our comforter. He's our guide. And we welcome all of our guests here tonight. One more time, Tabernacle of Joy. Would you let all of them know? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're the reason that we're having this service tonight. Priority number one at Tabernacle of Joy is that you leave here blessed. That you know beyond doubt that Jesus is the Lord God Almighty. And that He's your friend. That He's your Savior. That He is your God. Thank you for loving us and praying for us so much. It is so good, I tell you. You just want to get down and kiss the ground when you get back to Singapore. You just want to say there is no place like this home. God bless you. How many is ready to hear the ministering of the word? If you are, would you stand to your feet? Would you welcome Brother Lee Stone King right now to come and to minister the word of the Lord? Hallelujah. Brother Stone King, I think they love you. Make yourself at home here in Jesus' name. God bless you, wonderful people. I am delighted to be here and to feel the opulence, the greatness of God's Spirit among you people. I don't know if you understand this or not, but you are famous across the world because I am a very good PR man for all of you. I preach about you. I tell people everywhere about your worship and the dedication and consecration of the young people here and the reality of Jesus that is in this place. Look, turn to your neighbor, shake their hand and say, we are blessed. And we are wonderfully blessed here tonight. If you are visiting with us, we are delighted to have you, as we have already said. If we were in your church tonight, if you're visiting here with us tonight, if we were in your church, you would want us to act just like you. But we're not in your church tonight. You're in our church. So we're asking you to act just like us. And to have a wonderful time. So would you clap your hands again, all ye people, and shout with a voice of triumph unto the Lord. A great deal, a great deal has happened to me in the spirit since I was here back in December, and in this part of the world also in November. It is because of that that I want to share some things with you here tonight at the beginning of this Come Encounter Jesus crusade. 
I want you to turn with me to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Here in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, is a very unusual account recorded in the Bible. An amazing setting, really. But here in Mark, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1, the Bible says... And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him, no, not with chains because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Jesus said unto him, Come out of the man. Thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine or pigs feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea or drowned. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. I want to entitle this tonight, How Much of God Do We Manifest? We say that we are believers. We say that we are Bible believers. How much of this God that we serve, how much of him do we really manifest? Would you lift your hands, your voices, and your hearts, and would you pray that God will do with you individually exactly what he wants to do here tonight. And that God will do with us as a conglomerate exactly what he wants to do. Lord Jesus tonight, by the authority of the word of God, by the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, bind us together in one mind and one accord. Allow the angel of the Lord to be here tonight. O oh God, to minister to the heirs of salvation. Jesus, I am asking for the touch of the Master's hand, for the sound of his voice in our ears, in our heart, that you will walk through the corridors of our hearts and that we will hear, feel the, the footfall of the man from Galilee. Bind us together in one mind and one accord. Help us to be anointed both to hear and to speak. 
We will not fail to give you praise, glory, and honor. We ask all of these things in the matchless and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are praying, God, once again, that you will anoint us, speak to us, help us to hear your voice, and above all else, to be changed by the touch of the Master's hand. Heal every manner of disease here tonight and sickness through the gift of faith. Allow us, O oh God, to be redeemed by your Spirit. Help the prophetic to be upon us and among us. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. Thank you for standing so long. Would you... Clap up roarlessly for the Lord for a moment because He is worthy. And would you lift your voice again and just shout, as it were, with a voice of triumph. Man has walked on the moon. Man has gone into outer space. Man has climbed Mount Everest. Man has plumbed the depths of the sea, the oceans. Man has actually completed some almost unsurmountable obstacle courses, some of his own making just to prove his greatness, just to show forth his skill, ability, etc. Man has walked on the moon, gone to outer space, climbed Mount Everest, etc., as I've already stated. He has written about these things. He has exclaimed them to the world. But the last frontier... the realm of the Spirit of God. The last frontier is the heights of the realm of the Spirit of God, the depths of the realm of the Spirit of God. No one has ever scaled the heights of his power and ability. No one has ever plumbed the depths of his power and might. Frontier, the last frontier that needs to be explored, that needs to be, shall we say, confronted, is the realm of the Spirit of God. Nothing is more important in this hour than that. What I'm about to say here tonight is not to point a finger at any of you, but to point a finger at myself. Perhaps if I become transparent in this place tonight, perhaps if I'm honest with you, perhaps it'll help you personally. I was in an airport this last summer. I rather live there, actually. I was in the airport. It was jammed with people. And I was waiting for a flight, and I had drunk something and was just waiting. But right in the middle of that airport, I don't mean off to the side, not in a corner, but right in the middle of that airport, there was a Jewish man standing, probably 40, 45 years of age. He had the prayer shawl on. He had the yarmulke. It came time for him to pray. And right in the middle of people just everywhere coming and going, almost pushing into him, he opened those, that prayer book, and right in the middle of all of us, began to chant those ancient prayers out loud and begin the davening, as they call it, the, the bowing and worshiping and swaying. I sat there and watched him, and I, I felt conviction. 
He didn't ask anybody if it was all right to do it. He didn't ask anybody if they liked it or not. He just simply was doing the thing he knows to do in the faith he has for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And as I watched him, I thought to myself, Stone King, what is your problem? I was in another airport. There was a Jewish boy. I was just, the flight was delayed, and people were frustrated, and people were jammed in there. And uh, as I was reading something, I saw a motion over here on the side. And you know how you, you, I looked and you, you can see it, but it doesn't really register what you've seen until you look away. And so I turned and looked again. Here was a teenage Jewish boy. Evidently, he was orthodox. It was time to pray. He went against that wall and out loud he began to chant those ancient prayers and just bow. He didn't pray two or three seconds. He stood there and prayed nearly 15 minutes. And again, I felt a kind of conviction that I can't explain to you. I've noticed in my travels, Muslims spread those prayer rugs out in airports and pray. Hindus pray, Buddhists pray. I've seen them sit in a circle around the fire in an airport in at Gatwick in London, England, and just eat and pray and chant those Buddhist monks. And I thought to myself, what is my problem? God, something has got to happen for me. Something has got to happen for me. If there is anyone on the face of planet Earth that ought to be bold in public with what God has done for us, it is those of us here tonight who have been to water in his name, who have been filled with his spirit. If you believe that, would you throw your hands in the air? Would you let your voice out for a moment? And would you just cry out to God for a moment? Hallelujah, Jesus. And so I have been considering something. I have been reaching for God. And I have decided this. If you look very closely at God, God is what he does, and he does what he is. He's a savior, therefore he saves. He's a deliverer, therefore he delivers. He's a healer, therefore he heals. He's a redeemer, therefore he redeems. He does what he is, and he is what he does. If he is in us. then we do what he is because we are what he does. God, help us tonight that something will happen in this come encounter Jesus uh, that will put a fire and a boldness in us uh, like we've never ever known before. I can feel in the spirit that there are many of you here tonight that you're in exactly the same place I'm in. There's something that you want to get a hold of. There's something you want to touch. There's something you want to explore. There's something you want to try. I give you the freedom to do it. I set you free in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth by the authority of the Word of God, by the power of the name of Jesus. I remove all fear in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke all intimidation in the name of Jesus Christ that a fire, an apostolic fire from 33 AD will get a hold of you and consume you and cause you to be catapulted into the realm of the miraculous and the demonstration of the Spirit of God and power. If I'm talking to you, if the Holy Ghost is talking to you here tonight, you ought to be on your feet shouting or spinning or dancing or jumping up and down because God is in this place. Jesus is in this house. And that's why we're here, because Jesus is here. And when Jesus is here, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Nothing shall be impossible.
to them that be leave. And then, to bring more conviction to my life, Romans 8 and 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Look at it again. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. In other words, if I understand the English language, what it's really saying, if you're not led by the Spirit of God, you're really not a son of God. That's what it's saying. It's one thing to be filled by the Spirit. It's another thing totally to be led by that Spirit. I don't want to just be filled with the Spirit. I want to be led by the Spirit. I want to hear what thus saith the Lord. I want to know where God is looking. I want to hear His voice. And so I began. And I'm still at it. I was into it last night in a restaurant. God did something. I was in a doctor's office in my area with a friend of mine there on a little business. And uh, all of a sudden, from out of the inner office where the doctor was, a man walked out with his wife. And he had pains in his chest. And he said, I have pains in my chest. And in front of the doctor and his wife, while they were watching, the Holy Ghost came on me. And I walked over to him. He sat down to catch his breath. I walked over to him and I said, I am a man of God. I want to pray for you in Jesus' name. God will touch you. Would you like that? He looked at me. He looked at his wife, and he said yes. And right there in that doctor's office, I put my hands on his chest, knelt down in front of him, and began to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I finished, I took my hands off from him. He opened his eyes. He said, it's gone. Something is supposed to be gone when you pray in the name of Jesus. You've got that power. You've got that power. You've got that power here tonight as a believer. God is trying to get that out of us. He's trying to get that out of us. It's one thing to come here and do it in church. It's another thing to do it out there on the streets. And God is trying to get this to the streets. He's trying to get this outside these four walls. And we are all that he's got to take it. Lift your hands and let your voice out. God, here tonight, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, hear, O Master of the universe. Mm. I was in New Zealand in November of last year, in Auckland. God moved. There were some tremendous things that happened. Right in the middle of an altar service one night, someone grabbed me and they said, Brother Stone King, there is a woman here who is mute. She's never been able to speak. Would you pray for her? I said, of course. Take me to her. It was a large crowd. They led me over to a lady seated over here. And she must have been about 35-ish, something like that, 36, 37 years old, blonde hair, glasses. When she saw me coming, she began to smile. So I walked over to her, and I leaned forward, and I said, you cannot speak at all. Is that correct? She shook her head, yes. I said, have you ever spoken? She shook her head, no. I said, would you like to speak? She shook her head, yes. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and told me, she was a child, a mute spirit attached itself to her life. And that's why she's never been able to speak. I said, devil, you are an illegal tenant here. You've paid no rent on this house. You don't belong here. And I'm going to evict you. I lifted my hand and I said, in the 
name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, mute spirit, I command you to leave. Her head went back like that. Her mouth flew open. Her tongue began to fly run inside of her mouth. Uh, and all of a sudden she stopped and she said, Jesus. God filled her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost sitting right there. She began to speak with tongues. And when she stopped, she said, I'm so happy. I am so happy. I am so happy. She walked from person to person and said, I am so happy. I tell you tonight, I am so happy. I am so happy to be here among you to know this Jesus. Mm. There was an electrical engineer in that audience. Uh, he was near retirement. Uh, when he saw all of that, uh, he lifted his hands and began to worship God. He was deaf in one ear. I never went near him, but God just walked over, opened that deaf ear. He reached up and took the hearing aids out and just shoved them in his pocket. And God gave him the baptism of the Holy Ghost standing right there in the audience. Uh, the miraculous is upon us like never before. The miraculous is upon us like never before. And I've got nothing to lose, everything to gain. I'm just going to do it. It doesn't matter where. If I feel it, I'm going to do it because I've got nothing to lose. Reach over, take the hand of the person or lay your hand upon them and just begin to pray in Jesus' name. In other words, get the feel of who you are. Get the feel of the power that is upon you because there's an anointing upon this audience right now. A tremendous anointing upon this audience. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, I can feel the anointing of God. There's something just moving upon this audience. There's something moving. You can feel it from the top all the way to the bottom, from the left to the right, the right to the left. There's an anointing upon you because you are believers. Yes. Jesus. And then I was in Hawaii. And uh, there was a young Japanese man there and, he, and his wife. His name was Scott. Eighty percent of his stomach had been removed with cancer. He had a colostomy. He was just nothing but skin and bones. I mean, when I took a hold of him, it was just, just nothing. There was no body hardly there, just skin and bones. And I began to pray for him. I just went over and prayed for him when I found out who he was and what the story was. I went over, laid hands on him, and prayed for him. And then I walked away. And I prayed for some other people. And then after a while, I went back and prayed for him the second time. And I went away and worked among the people. And then I went back again and prayed for him the third time. Why not? Why not? I mean, why not? If you feel it, why not? We are so afraid of what we're going to look like. We're so afraid someone's watching us. Well, watch. That's what I have to say. Just watch. I don't care who's watching. If I feel it, I'm going to do it because God is trying to do something. That third time, when we prayed for him that third time, I felt the thing I know. I felt it go from me. The, that man couldn't even eat. He was able to eat. The next day, he was in the restaurant with us eating and laughing and talking. The next day. 80% of the stomach gone, a colostomy. He was extremely ill. When that meal was over, as he left, he went down an escalator and happened to run into the doctor that had taken his stomach out. The doctor stopped and said, Scott, you look 
great. The doctor couldn't believe it. His countenance was changed. Something happened. I just got a report. He's still doing well. He's still doing well. What if I had not gone back the second time? What if I'd not gone back the third time? If you feel it, do it. In fact, all the time I'm here, I give you license to do anything you feel to do. And then when I leave, he can fix it up, whatever. But if you feel to do something, just do it. That's our problem. That's our problem. A lot of you feel to do things, but you just don't do it. I release you to do it. I release you to do it. Because God is looking for someone to be obedient to him. The key to entering into the realm of the miraculous. Here's how to get in the, into the miraculous. Availability. 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 If you make yourself available, God will use you. He's just looking for someone that is available. I'm available. I'm available. I'll do it. I'll go. I'll say. I'll do. Shout, I am available. Oh. Look at your neighbor and say, then go. You can feel the authority in all of that. Uh, there is something happening here in the spirit. I can feel something here. I can feel something here in the spirit among you. There's a new depth here in this church. There's a new depth here in this place by the authority of the word of God. Be thou healed. Be thou healed. Be thou healed. Be thou healed. That's it, Timothy. That's it. You've got it. Tap your hands again. All ye people, and just shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph, healing triumph, healing victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Did you feel it? Did you feel it when you laid hands? That's it. Because there was a fire. When you raced by me, there was like a fire. A fire was swirling around you. A fire was swirling around him. There's a fire in this house. There's a fire in this house. There's a fire in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Can you feel an authority here? Can you feel an authority here? There is an authority in this house. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. With that authority. With that authority that is here tonight. If you are a believer here tonight, why don't you reach over and touch the person next to you, lay hands on them, and begin to pray in the wonderful name of Jesus. Just begin to pray in the name of Jesus. You will feel the Spirit of God. You will feel the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. 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 I can feel the power of God. I can feel the power of God going up and down this particular aisle. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the demonstration of the Spirit of God and power is in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. There are people being delivered right now. There are people being miraculously healed right now. In the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
Hallelujah, Jesus. If God has just touched you, if God has just touched you, and you can feel something like you've never felt before, just lift your hands and give God the glory. Lift your hands and just give Him the praise for it. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. This is one of the reasons I love to come here. Because you people are hungry. You people are hungry. You people are reaching for something. I believe this church is the Antioch of the East. I believe this is a door to the entire 1040 window. You have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. So why don't you get into it tonight like you've never been into it before. Just get into it because God is depending on you. God will open doors for you. Some of you will leave this area. Some of you will be sent to those places and God will use you miraculously. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Believers, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall recover. They shall recover. That's the kind of power that's on you. That's the kind of power that's in you. That's the kind of power that is yours. That is your rightful heritage. Claim it tonight. Claim it tonight. You ought to come out of that seat. You ought to come out of that seat waving your hands, lifting your voice, shouting with your voice. Claim your rightful heritage. This is not a religion here. This is an apostolic encounter. This is an apostolic book of Acts church from 33 AD. You can hear the sound of the rushing mighty wind. You can hear the crackle of cloven tongues of fire in this house. Angels are in this place ministering to the heirs of salvation. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, Jesus! Jesus! Oh. Uh. That's it. Let your voice out again. Jesus. Jesus, oh, master of the universe, speak to us. Let us hear your voice. Let us feel the touch of your hand, the brush of angels' wings. A door has opened 
A door has opened. You're walking through it. Keep on walking. Keep on walking. Keep on walking. As you walk through, the gifts of the Spirit, the demonstration is being handed to you. A package of power. A package of power. Your rightful heritage. There are young people here right now, both young women and young men, that God has shown you something in the last few moments, something he wants you to do. I'm talking to you. The Holy Ghost is upon you in such a way. Would you stand to your feet and just lift both hands and just begin to worship God? Lift your hands, let your voice out. That's it. That's it. Urach Rishala Torashataya. Urak Rishataya. And may you never be the same. That's it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Authority. Anointing. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Jesus, I praise you. I praise you, Jesus. There's something, something majestic upon us. There's something here tonight from ancient days. Something that transcends human logic and reasoning and understanding. The miraculous. You may be seated.
maniac, Gadara, lived among the tombs. His name was Legion. Legion, in Roman times, a legion was 3,000 soldiers. It could be from 3,000 to 6,000 soldiers. That's what a legion was. This man was so possessed, so filled with demonic forces. The name of that demonic force was legion. Chains could not hold him. Fetters could not hold him. No matter what they did, he broke it. He cut himself with stones. Lived among the tombs of the dead. It's obvious who the devil was. Obvious. But when he was clothed in his right mind, was obvious who Jesus had been. Saul of Tarsus murdered the Christians, but after the light and the voice he heard on the road to Damascus, when he stands up preaching the gospel, it's obvious. Jesus had been. Peter cursed and denied he even knew Jesus. But when he came out of that upper room on the day of Pentecost and preached that glorious message, it's obvious where Jesus had been. The man that was born blind. When he appeared and the religious authorities saw it, they said, who has done this? The blind man stated it. And they reviled Jesus, called him a sinner, basically cursed him in everyday common street vernacular. But the blind man said, who is now seeing. He said, whether he be a sinner or no, I don't know. One thing I know, for as I was blind, now I see. The thing I'm asking is this. The thing that really convicts me, haunts me. I wonder. I really wonder. There's nothing more important to me in life right now. I just turned 68 years of age this past Saturday. More than anything else in all these years, I want to know one. people hear me preach, when people talk to me, is it obvious to them that Jesus is there? It means more to me than anything. Nothing is more important to me. I want to be a real Christian. I want to be the real thing. I want to live it like I've never lived it before. We were in a restaurant last night. There was Sister Willoughby on the wall, and Sister Wong, Caleb. As we were leaving the restaurant, 
there was a waitress, I think Brother and Sister Dads, had talked to her, had witnessed to her. And they told her about my being raised from the dead. And I think she wanted to meet me. And so I stopped by and met her and shook her hand. A lovely, lovely person. Her name was Anne. And she said this. She said, there's something about this has come at the right time. I told her my story. How God had miraculously raised me from the dead. And she began to brush her arm with her fingers. She said, I can feel something. I can feel something. Right there in the restaurant. And there were other waiters and waitresses that were observing. And I took her hand. I said, I feel to pray for you right here in this restaurant. And we stood right there and just prayed out loud for her. I felt the presence of God. She blinked back tears. Why not? That's what I'm asking. Why not? Why not do this? Why not do it? I think she's supposed to come to this meeting. Lift your hands and just say, Jesus, I want to be like you. Just lift your hands and say, Jesus, I want to be like you. Why not? Why not, people? Why not? Why not have a pastor that just breaks and runs like an Olympic runner and scales the steps to pray for someone that God has spoken to him about? Why not? Why not? That's it. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I set you free. I set you free to do what you feel to do right now. Some of you feel a boldness to pray, to command. Do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. There's a young man walking right there in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Let your voice out. Let your voice out in the name of Jesus. Because it's happening. People, it's happening. Not because I'm doing it. Not because I'm laying hands on, but because you as believers are laying hands on. And that is the transition that must be made Believers need to command. Believers need to pray for the sick and they will be healed in the name of Jesus. This place is filled with believers. Powerful, powerful believers in the name of Jesus. 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 Once again, just lift your hands. And let your voice out while people are ministering in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you're seated beside a visitor tonight, just lay your hands over on the visitor. Take that visitor by the hand and begin to pray for them in the name of Jesus. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid in Jesus' name. Don't be afraid in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. This Jesus loves you, son. He loves you. This Jesus loves you. He loves you. That's it. Let your voice out and just pray in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. All over this audience, just you may want to stand and move to someone there's an altar service going on throughout this entire audience. Uh, let's just stand in the presence of the Lord and begin to 
Continue to pray fervently for those that are here in the name of Jesus. You may want to walk with someone to this altar of prayer and just stand here in the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's all stand and just lift our hands and let our voices out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Otolohoto koshata. Otorocharacharashata. Halofaracha shapate kishota kaka. In the name of Jesus. 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 That's it. In the name of Jesus. 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 There are a number of you here tonight that God, God bestowed upon you his power and anointing. You may want to come. I invite you to come and stand near the front and just lift your hands and totally claim all that God has done for you here tonight. In the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. In Jesus' name. 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 Hallelujah. 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 The Holy Ghost is pulling, pulling at a number of people here tonight. In the name of Jesus. 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 That's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. Fill with the Holy Ghost here tonight. Jesus, 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 I pray. Keep on coming. The, the Holy Ghost is pulling at people to come to this altar of prayer. Come, bring that friend with you that you've begun to pray with. There are short Bible studies going on all over this audience at the hands of believers. This is your day, believer. This is your hour. Tonight, tonight, authority and power upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the authority of the Word of God. By the power of the name of the Lord Jesus. This is a beautiful sight. Believers ministering. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. In Jesus' name, 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 in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, all of you young people especially, bring someone with you. Come and pray near the frontier in the name of the Lord. The name of Jesus. There are adults here visiting tonight. That's it. Otokarahashata. Otorovravarakasha. Hatorovrahataka. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Wonderful. Keep walking toward Jesus. Just keep walking toward him hallelujah 
Aleluya, 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 aleluya. People are weeping and crying in many places. Lift your hands once again all over the audience and get, let, blend your voice. Let, give your voice in worship and praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. People are beginning to receive the Holy Ghost. Wonderfully. Beautifully. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I worship you, Jesus. Fill with the Holy Ghost. I release the gift of faith to these people here now in the name of Jesus.
Thank you. 